Hi, this is Matt with APWA, the Roving Reporter. Today we're in Bloomington, Indiana to view a former rail yard that has turned into a community park. I'm joined today by Cecil Penland and Dave Williams. Uh, tell us about Switchyard Park. Where did the vision come from? How did it end up on your desk as a, uh, a project? Well, I think the vision was um, established years ago when uh, previous city administrations were contacted by the CSX Railroad whose customer base had declined along with the decline of manufacturing uh, factories in Bloomington. So it essentially became surplus property for their use, and this would have been three city administrations ago uh, offering the opportunity for the city to secure ownership. The switchyard came quite a few years after the Beeline Trail, so there was a three-mile corridor that runs through Switchyard Park uh, to the northern end of town, and I think that spawned the vision for Switchyard Park. It, the first acquisition was the Three Mile Corridor. It's been an extremely popular facility, uh, and it went through what was then uh, still owned and abandoned Switchyard Park property owned by the railroad. So I think people saw clearly what the balance of the acreage could become just by simply going down the trail through the park. Former rail yard the soil had to be remediated for this park to move in. Right. Can you tell us about that? Yes, um, and it, it actually worked out, I think, to our favor that we constructed and remediated the rail corridor, what is known today as the Beeline Trail, cuts to the heart of our downtown and goes through the switchyard. So the, the chemicals or the product of material of concern is coal ash and cinders. And in the case of the switchyard, in the case of the rail corridor from right-of-way line to right-of-way line in the entire switchyard property is covered with literally a century's mm -hmm. use of coal ash cinders as a fill or a structural fill material and it's to depths of four feet in the switchyard. But we decided uh, Bloomington's a very green environmentally conscious um, community. We sought out directions from our State Department of Environmental Management. How should we do this? How should we make sure that we um, make sure that the public has no apprehensions about using either the trail facility or future switchyard park? So, in the case of the Beeline Trail, we had a remediation plan. We have an environmental covenant in perpetuity about making sure that the soil cover or the pavement cover over what lies underneath, which is the remaining coal ash, um, is taken care of so there's a protective layer for the public so on a much larger scale we tackled the switch yard but we had some credibility with the state environmental agency and and came to understand that we were the only community in the state to date that had voluntarily wanted to remediate coal ash I think some people I think take their chances mm -hmm. from a liability standpoint um, but the the material can be uh, a health concern particularly high concentrations of the contaminants mm -hmm. So we set the bar pretty high for the B-Line, and I think clearly once we did that, we were more than willing to spend, quite frankly, a lot of additional dollars to make sure the bar was equally high, the standard was equally high for the switch art. Mm -hmm. The park has a community garden. Correct. And you use recycled water to hydrate that community garden. Supplemental, yes. Okay, uh, that's good. Does that water have to be cleaned or remediated or mm -hmm. anything like it that? It actually doesn't because it's not filtered through the ground here in Switchyard. Okay. It's actually reclaimed from the main pavilion facility, mm -hmm. which is an 11,000 square foot building. And so all the water is captured off of that building. It's piped into an underground cistern that's 30,000 gallons. Mm -hmm. um, from there, there is actually, it's probably a half a mile down the distance from the main pavilion, mm -hmm. but the community gardens actually have a small water tower down there. So the water's pumped from this underground cistern into a 3,000 gallon uh, above grade water tower where it's then uh, sent down into the community gardens. Mm -hmm. So all of, the, um, all of the reclaimed water is used for perennial plantings in the community garden. Again, it's not, it's not really actually ever touching the ground in Switchyard right. Park before being used. <coughs> Pardon me. And then we actually have um, we have a separate system that waters all the lawns in the park just because there is a significant amount but there's not enough reclaimed water mm -hmm. on site to be able to water those lawn areas. The park utilizes alternative energy sources with solar panels. Can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, um, well, fortunately, um, the city of Bloomington is a very progressive community, as David mentioned, and uh, they're actually very progressive in their development ordinances with, within the city. So any new uh, public facility that's constructed um, by the municipality actually has to seek LEED accreditation. So uh, the structures that we were constructing, the um, enclosed structures, conditioned structures that we were constructing on the site were actually designed to meet LEED Silver accreditation, primarily the main pavilion. Um, so in order, in addition to being a, uh, a requirement for meeting the LEED um, Silver requirement, I mean, it was just good practice, but mm -hmm. uh, it was an early on um, design program ele element to incorporate um, solar panels. And so this, this building actually incorporates a 10,000 kilowatt system. Um, and everything's kind of located on the south um, south exposure of the roof. Um, we also had several other, you know, just kind of sustainability requirements mm -hmm. within the park, um, you know, through the use of permeable pavements and uh, daylighting creeks that have been uh, channelized or piped over the years by the railroads, uh, remediating remaining woodland. So sustainability was certainly uh, something that we heard numerous times. It was a kind of a resounding theme that we heard during our charrette process and during the design of the project and then you know something that the city wanted to do um, to help restore the site. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the, the the creek that you mentioned. Uh, how did that factor into the the design of it of the project mm -hmm. and uh, where does it stand now? Mm -hmm. Well so there was a about, um, I believe a quarter mile or so of creek that had been put into a three-sided box culvert over the years. Mm -hmm. And that was done, it was basically um, put into that culvert across the entire width of the park to make transportation across it very easy by railroad. Um, so we actually removed that culvert, um, regraded the stream, and used uh, native plugs and seeding to kind of restore that area. Um, so that that was definitely a critical part of it. The stream has is now daylighted. The plantings are installed along the banks of the stream. They have not come in yet. It usually mm -hmm. takes a year to three years for that plant material to come in and be fully, um, fully um, mature. So it, it's it's in process. Um, the majority of the construction is done, and right now it's really just a matter of letting the vegetation mature. Sure. Uh, Cecil, you mentioned the sustainability. So I'll run down some things here. Uh, limited asphalt was used, grassland was maximized, native plants and trees were used. We mentioned the water in the uh, community garden. Can you talk about the sustainability a little more? Yeah, so again, it, going back to the city's development standards and the city being a very progressive community, um, that is something that is integral uh, within the city of Bloomington, a very strong sustainability component. But within the park, specifically, we chose to use permeable pavers everywhere that we could. We actually have a uh, little over three acres of permeable pavers throughout the park, some of which are in parking lots and some of which are in the primary um, plaza within the park that we call the platform. Um, so that's one sustainability component. Um, all of the vegetation within the park is either native or adapted so that really upon establishment it doesn't require any irrigation even though we do have a supplemental irrigation system. Uh, we already talked about the reclaimed water. Um, in addition to um, to those items, uh, there was some initial discussion or concern about the perception because the, the site was very wooded when we started. However, because it was a very impacted site from 100 plus years of railroad activity, the vegetation that was here was, uh, it was either invasive or it was of poor quality. So uh, there was some initial concern about, you know, removing that vegetation and how that might be perceived by the public. Uh, but what we've done is um, we've removed all kind of invasive species. There's a three-year management plan uh, that, uh, as a part of this park construction contract that's being completed, um, Year one, they're coming in and they're removing all natives. Year two, they kind of do a supplemental removal and begin replanting with native vegetation. And in year three, it's kind of all supplemental planting. And that's focusing on about just under 16 acres of, uh, of property within the switch yard. You know, in addition to that, we tried to use local materials. Um, we're in the heart of limestone country in Bloomington, Indiana. So you'll, as you kind of go around the park, you'll see the use of a lot of natural uh, materials here, limestone, again, trying to use uh, pavers, crushed stone pavements, uh, and materials that you would find here locally. 
and materials you would have found along the railroad throughout history. Architecturally, we've used a lot of durable materials uh, in addition to limestone. I think uh, sustainability also involves lowering your maintenance costs mm -hmm. over time or for the life of the facility. Um, so uh, and the budget would reflect a lot of uh, site furnishings, a lot of pavements, a lot of building facades that uh, clearly will be lower maintenance over the decades yeah. now. And flexibility. I mean, a part of the sustainability is the flexibility in the design of the main pavilion because it's, uh, while it is a fully conditioned building, it also has, is designed with overhead doors on its north and south facades. It can be opened up during the summer and it can be essentially act as an open air pavilion. I want to thank the City of Bloomington, Cecil Penland, Dave Williams, Paula McDevitt, and Sean Williams, and our videographer Andrew Krebs for taking time out of their morning to show us around Switchyard Park and uh, uh, being helping APWA tell their story. If you have a park, if you have a project that you want highlighted by APWA, we'd love to come out and help you tell your story. Just reach out to us with the links below.